Bria here from Etch Actuarial and last week I taught you all about the V lookup formula and how that works and in this week's video we're talking all about if formulas. These are really really important for your actuarial career and you will use them all the time so make sure you pay close attention and by the way if you didn't download that PDF that I talked about in last week's video the one that tells you all the formulas that you need to know as an aspiring actuary then make sure you download it today. Right down in the description I will put a link to where you can go get that. Okay, I already know that you know Excel is really important for your actuarial journey, so I hope you'll pay close attention. I want to get right into the video because there's a lot of nitty gritty if formulas that will help you in your actuarial career. Okay, let's jump into my computer screen. Okay, just like last week's video, we have our set of data or our table of data. It's the same table we used last week. So let's look into some of the if formulas that we can use. Now there's one really simple one here. So let's just use our basic if formula. So equals if now this one evaluates whether a condition is true and if it is true then it gives or it returns us one value if it's not true it returns a different value so let's say we want to determine if this column c the value in column c is equal to new york if it is equal to new york or ny then we want it to return a one if it's not then we want it to return a zero and this way we'll be able to sum up all the values in this column to determine how how many of these policyholders live in New York. So let's go ahead and do this. So the test we want it to do is we want it to see if this equals New York. So if that is true, then we want it to give us a one. If it's not true, then we want it to give us a zero just like that. So in this situation, it is an NY or it is New York, so we are expecting it to give us a one. Let's hit enter, and it does. Okay, so perfect. Now let's try it with this cell. Equals if this equals New York, so that's the statement we want to be true. If it's true, we're going to have it return a one. If it's not true, we'll have it return a zero. So in this situation, again, it's an NY, so we think it will return a one. I'll press enter and it does. Let's do that one more time here. Equals if this equals ny, comma, one, zero. In this situation, it's not ny, so I'm expecting it to give us a zero and it does, perfect. Now there's actually a way we can do this really easily and I referenced this in last week's video as well. So if you haven't checked it out, make sure you do. But we can actually drag this formula down and it's going to keep referring to the same cells that we want it to. So in this situation, we dragged it down one. So it's going to reference this cell. And again, this one is live in New York. And by the way, I do not live in New York. This is data for me, but I do not live in New York. so. I I just put my name there. It's not accurate information, but um, as we can see here, it says New York. So here we should be getting a one here. It doesn't say New York, so we should get a zero. And here we get a one. Now, if we wanted to know how many of our policyholders lived in New York, we could go equals sum and we could just sum up all those values and we get Four. So now we know that four of our policyholders live in New York, which is pretty easy to tell just by looking at the data. But imagine you had thousands and thousands of different policyholders here. It would not be that easy. So this is one way that you could go about determining how many policyholders live in New York. Okay, I'm going to delete all that. Here's another way that you could determine that. And this one involves using a different if formula. So we're going to do the count if function. So if I do equals count if like that, now it's going to ask me for a range and criteria. So I'm going to give it this range of data and my criteria is going to be n, y. So now it's going to count how many times in this selected uh, array of data that it finds the value n, y. So if I press enter here, we should see four and we do. So it is using the count if formula to determine how many of these policyholders live in New York. Count if is just one of the things we can do. There's also a formula called sum if. So if we want to use the sum if formula, 
what we can do is actually determine what the first year premiums were for these policyholders only if they live in New York. So in this situation, we want to give it the range where it's going to look up the value of New York. So the range is going to be right here. Now our criteria is going to be the same, New York, like that. And now it wants a sum range, which is something it wasn't asking for when we were doing the count if function, but this time it's actually going to be summing up values. So we want to input the sum range. So we'll give it this value. And now it knows that since there are seven different cells here and seven different cells here in this column, it can match them up. So it knows that, uh, for example, this New York corresponds to this 147. This New York corresponds to this 185. So now if I press equal, it is only going to sum up the values of the premiums for people that use or that live in New York. So I'll press enter here and we get 976. Now there's a really easy way to check this. We can do equals this plus this plus this plus this. And again, imagine if you had thousands and thousands of pieces of data, you wouldn't want to go through and do that. So using the sum if formula will make it much easier, but let's verify that this is correct. I'll put equals and we get the exact same number, a 976. Another thing that we could do is just select this value, this value, this value, and this value. And the way that I'm doing that is by clicking on the different values or the different cells as I hold down the control function on my keyboard. And right down here in the corner, we can see that it sums up to 976. So this is a really valuable area that I look at a lot when I'm doing actuarial work because it's a really easy way to sum up numbers without actually putting a formula into my workbook. So I could do that for any different number of combinations. If I wanted to know what the total of those three values was, I could just look here and we get that the sum is 8. 59, but it also gives me the average here too if I wanted that and it counts the number of cells that I have selected. Okay, so that was the count if formula, the sum if formula. There's also an average if formula, which is very similar to the sum if formula. So if I do average if, then I can select the range, which is right here, and I will select my criteria, which is New York, because I just want to find out the average premium that people are paying in New York in their first year, and then I will give it the average range. So I want it to select its numbers from there. I will put an end bracket on that. I'll press enter and we see that the answer is 244. So on average, people living in New York pay $244 for their first year of insurance premium. And this is just made up numbers. It's not accurate at all, but we can double check this by selecting the values that are related to New York policyholders. And again, we'll look down here at our average and we see it says 244. So these are some really awesome functions. Another thing that we can do is sum ifs. So if we do equals sum ifs, this allows us to put more than one criteria in. So in this situation, our sum range is going to be this column and our criteria is going to be this column for New York. For that column, we want it to say NY. And let's put in an additional criteria for car type. So if I select this column and say that that has to be equal to car, and then I put a bracket on that, then it's only going to sum up premiums that are for people living in New York with a car. I'll press equals there. And now we only have this situation and this situation where that applies. So we should get the value of 211 plus 147, which equals 358, which we can see right here. And that's the value that we got from our sum ifs formula. 
Okay, I hope you liked learning about if functions. In next week's video, I'm talking all about the special capabilities that Excel has that you're going to be using again and again and again in your actuarial role. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe right now, subscribe so you don't miss that and even click that little notification bell, whatever it is, so that you don't miss next week's video, which is all about Excel again and the capabilities that it has that you need to know. And if you haven't yet, go download that PDF that I talked about. It gives you all the functions that you need to know as an aspiring actuary and I know you will find it beneficial. It's a formula sheet that I give to my members of the AAC, my Actuary Accelerator community, and just having that for you so you know what is important is going to be really, really helpful on your actuarial journey. So go download it and I will see you in next week's video. Bye for now!